Okay, so I'll take you through the steps that you need to go through to apply the window tinting to the glass. But uh, before we start, let's just have a look at some of the materials apart from the, the glass and the window tinting. The first one I think, and probably most important, is we need a solution of water and Johnson's baby shampoo. Now we're talking only about uh, half a teaspoon for maybe in a atomizer sprayer like this. Um, it dries, leaving no residue. Um, you shouldn't use any cleaning fluids such as ammonia based water, uh, glass cleaners on here because that will affect the epoxy on the film. So yeah, look, it's just a, a, a soap solution. This is the best to use. In terms of trimming and cutting, then maybe a knife or a scalpel blade um, is going to be required. In terms of removing the bubbles from the film, a little plastic wedge like this, this actually came with the window tinting, but a credit card edge would be satisfactory. Cloths, it's best to have some lint-free ones. Um, this I don't think is lint-free, but I do have another cloth here which is for cleaning uh, glasses, which I got from a, a $2 shop. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to finish off the glass with that. Um, so yeah, cleanliness is really important here. So I have cleaned the glass fairly well to start off before uh, setting the video up, but I'll just give it a final clean. I'm going to use some of the solution here. Spray is not fantastic, but that's okay. I'm going to start with this cleaning cloth. It's using circular motions to move the solution around and to dry it up. Turn the cloth, find an unused clean spot, keep on going. That's nearly dry now, so I'm then going to come over to the lint free cloth again, probably just to quite small circular motions, rubbing reasonably hard. I'm working on the kitchen bench top here, you know, I think it's just a little bit cleaner maybe than the garage or the workshop. Because uh, any dust or dirt that gets trapped uh, is really going to show up. So we do need to make this as, as clean as possible. Now to check this, the best thing is just to lift it up by, by the corners and just let the light run across it and see if you can see any blemishes or remaining marks or dust or anything. So that's that's looking pretty good now. Now film, film comes with a, a backing sheet on it but it's not easy to tell just by looking at the film which side the backing is actually on. So what we do is we're just going to turn over one corner gently, not, not, not creasing it, and try and rub the surfaces together. You see that surface is now sticking, I don't seem to be able to rub the film against itself. If I turn it around the other way though, you can see that that slides really easily. So this tells me that this side has actually got the backing material on, and this side is the actual window tinting. And so what I want to do is I want to put this down on the bench with the backing material facing up so that we can remove it. I'm going to do that by wetting down the bench. Just doing a final check. Yeah, that's the slippy surface. And so the, the solution on the bench just helps it to stick down. I've actually got a bit of um, a roll of sticky tape here and I've pre-prepared -pre two small pieces because the best way to remove the backing strip is just to apply a bit of tape to the top, a bit of tape to the bottom and then as you then peel them apart, I'm not too sure whether you can see on the camera but now I'm actually lifting the backing material up off, off the base. So I hope 
where that's a little bit easier. You can, you can see the backing material, this is the base. Now as we remove the backing material, we want to just keep on spraying. The spray will be used as a lubrication for the application, but also it dampens down the static electricity that's generated as I'm peeling the backing off. And that static electricity can cause an awful lot of dust to suddenly come up and clamp onto the surface. So here we have, it's all ready to go. The glue layer is facing up. I just need to lift this up, take it around, and in one motion just pop it down on the glass. Just in one motion, there we go. Just going to turn the camera a little bit back forward. There we go. And there's some quite large bubbles in here, but we can start using this straight away to chase the bubbles and the trapped water from the centre to the outside of the glass. And pressing reasonably hard and this uh, cloth underneath will stop me cracking the glass because it will support the glass a bit better. And just working right towards the edges, as I say, applying a reasonable amount of pressure. I think things are looking pretty good. What I'll do now is because I've got some moisture on top of this, I'll just try and start to dry this off. So if there are any imperfections or bubbles, I can see them a bit more clearly. And I can see one there, that's great. So I'll just chase that all the way to the edge. I'm now going to trim and I'm going to trim fairly crudely to start off with. Just to get the real excess. Maybe that edge is already pretty, pretty close. So we can remove, let's just be careful that as you remove it you don't lift the edge. See I haven't quite cut through there. Coming back with the squeegee, pushing things back down again. It's looking pretty good now. I'm just going to lift up the 
glass. I'm not too worried about putting finger marks on the back of the glass or even on the front because they can be cleaned off. What I'm going to do now is actually to trim right back to the edge of the glass. Okay, so just finishing it off there, um, we've got the film applied, uh, just ready to leave to dry off for a couple of days. You may get some patchy marks as it dries out, but hopefully those disappear. Um, sometimes leaving it um, in the sun um, will actually clear those up. But yeah, it does take um, two or three days to dry off. Thanks very much.